Solar Grand Minima Threat Analysis James Ermaruzic 1 the 3rd of June 2009 Abstract We are approaching a period when the sun is going quiet In the past these periods with few sunspots such as the Dalton minimum Maunda minimum and Spora minimum produced decades of global cooling famine and plagues This paper provides an analysis of the global cooling threat Isolar cycles solar activity, visible by the number of sunspots, varies over a cycle of approximately 11 years. This variation is defined as a solar sunspot cycle. The periodic cycle begins at a solar minimum, peaks at a solar maximum and then falls back down to the next solar minimum. The International Sunspot Index is used to define the beginning and end of each solar cycle. Currently the Earth is in a solar minimum transitioning into solar cycle 24. The Sun undergoes a magnetic pole reversal approximately once every 11 years. The Sun's magnetic field is normally dipolar but during solar maximum, quadrupole and octopole components exist as well. It has been suggested that the sunspot cycle is related to the planetary cycle of the four major planets, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus and Neptune. One, There are three centers of mass that are of interest, the Sun, the major planets, and the solar system. Approximately once every 11 years, the four major planets are grouped ahead of the Sun as the solar system moves through galactic space. This causes the Sun to occupy a reciprocal position figure 1. On the opposite side of the solar system's center of mass. About 11 years later the major planets are grouped behind the Sun causing it to occupy a reciprocal position ahead of the solar system's center of mass. The Sun therefore alternately accelerates as it moves forward through galactic space and then decelerates to occupy a position behind the solar system's center of mass. All this occurs while the solar system as a whole moves forward through galactic space. The acceleration and deceleration cause the Sun to wobble in its path. The wobble creates turbulence in the Sun's interior, which is characterized by changes in sunspot activity. To the quiet Sun, grand minima of the Sun exhibits great variability in the strength of each solar cycle. This activity ranges from the extremely quiet grand minima such as the Maunder minimum 1645-1715, AD, to a very active grand maxima such as the enhanced activity observed during most of the 20th century 1940-2000 AD. High energy galactic cosmic rays enter Earth's atmosphere collide with sufficient force to cause a nuclear spallation reaction with atmospheric molecules. Some of the fission products include radionuclides 14C and 10B, which settle down on Earth's surface. Their concentration can be measured in ice cores, allowing a reconstruction of solar activity levels into the distant past. The Sun's magnetic field wrapped in the solar winds deflects galactic cosmic rays trying to enter the solar system and is therefore responsible for modulating production of these radioactive isotopes. Yusa Skin et al. details the reconstruction of solar activity during the Holocene period from 10,000 BC to the present. To refer to Figure 2. The reconstructions indicate that the overall level of solar activity since the middle of the 20th century stands amongst the highest of the past 10,000 years. This time period was a very strong grand maxima. Typically these grand maxima are short-lived lasting in the order of 50 years. The reconstruction also reveals grand minima epochs of suppressed activity, of varying durations have occurred repeatedly over that time span. A solar grand minima is defined as a period when the, smoothed, sunspot number is less than 15 during at least two consecutive decades. The sun spends about 17% of the time in a grand minima state. Figure 2. Sunspot activity throughout the Holocene. Blue and red areas denote grand minima and maxima, respectively. The entire series is spread out over two panels for better visibility. Two impact 2009 2. A grand minima state can last for several decades. 
approximately 27 grand minima have occurred during the Holocene covering the past 12,000 years. The following table identifies the approximate dates and durations of these grand minima.2. Center of Grand minima Duration 1680 AD 80 years 1470 AD 160 years 1305 AD 70 years 1040 AD 60 years 685 AD 70 years 360 BC 60 years 765 BC 90 years 1390 BC 40 years 2860 BC 60 years 3335 BC 70 years 3500 BC 40 years 3625 BC 50 years 3940 BC 60 years 4225 BC 30 years 4325 BC 50 years 5260 BC 140 years 5460 BC 60 years 5620 BC 40 years 5710 BC 20 years 5985 BC 30 years 6215 BC 30 years 6400 BC 80 years 7035 BC 50 years 7305 BC 30 years 7515 BC 150 years 8215 BC 110 years 9165 BC 150 years 3 Galactic cosmic rays Galactic cosmic rays, GCRs, are high-energy charged particles that originate outside our solar system. About 85% are protons, nuclei of hydrogen atoms, 12% alpha particles, helium nuclei, and the remainder are electrons and the nuclei of heavier atoms. The energy levels of GCRs observed in deep space generally lie in the 100 mV, million electron volts, to 10 GeV, billion electron volts, range. Above 1 GeV, the particle flux rate decreases significantly according to a power law with an exponent of approximately 2.5. Cosmic rays are produced when a star exhausts its nuclear fuel and explodes into a supernova. These stars are generally new short-lived blue stars of the spectral type O20100 solar masses, or blue-white stars of spectral type B, 3 to 20 solar masses. Impact 2009-3 Figure 3 Pictorial of GCR interaction with the Sun's heliosphere The Sun's magnetic field modulates the GCR flux rate on Earth. Just as cosmic rays are deflected by the magnetic fields in interstellar space, they are also affected by the interplanetary magnetic field embedded in the solar wind, the plasma of ions and electrons blowing from the solar corona at about 400 km forward slash sec, and therefore have difficulty reaching the inner solar system. The effects from the solar winds are felt at distance approximately 200 Australian dollars from the sun, in a region of space known as the heliosphere. Refer to Figure 3. The relationship between solar cycles and GCR flux rate at the Earth's surface is shown in Figure 4. 
RZ is the sunspot number. J is the cosmic ray flux. This flux rate measured energetic galactic cosmic rays in the energy range of 145-440 mV using ground-based neutron monitors. During solar maximum the GCR flux rate is at its minimum. During solar minimums, the GCR flux rate increases significantly. The graph covers the period from 1974 to 2001. Figure 4. Sunspot cycle versus GCR flux rate.3 impact 2009-4. For clouds the sun is a major influence on climate change on Earth in that it provides solar irradiance that warms the planet and a far-reaching magnetic field that shields Earth from the effects of galactic cosmic rays, which cools the planet. The magnetic field wrapped in the solar winds modulates the flux rate of cosmic rays which affects cloud formation and thereby the planet's global albedo. Past studies have shown a relationship between the flux rate of galactic cosmic rays and low-level ocean cloud formation. Research by Nigel Marsh, Henrik Svensmark and Agel Fries Christensen provides a good foundation in understanding the relationship between galactic cosmic rays and cloud formation. 456 When GCRs collide with the Earth's atmosphere, they release in nuclear collision a cascade of secondary particles, protons, neutrons and muons, which continue to penetrate deeper and deeper into the atmosphere. This cascading effect continues until the particle's energy falls too low to undergo further collisions. This generally ends around 16 km above the Earth's surface in the lower atmosphere. The ions produced within the troposphere by cosmic rays are important element of aerosol production. In the troposphere, ionization contributes to gas particle formation of ultrafine, 20 nm, aerosols that build into cloud condensation nuclei, CCN. Charged raindrops are 10 to 100 times more efficient in capturing aerosols than uncharged drops. In slightly supersaturated water vapor, when aerosol is dissolved in the tiny haze particles the droplet's vapor pressure lowers, which increases droplet growth. The water vapor condenses into larger water droplets that form clouds. Earth's ocean cloud cover is strongly correlated with GCR flux modulated by solar cycle variations. Refer to Figure 5. Figure 5. A strong correlation between galactic cosmic rays, GCRs, and Earth's cloud cover. Figure shows cosmic rays fluxes from climax, thick curve, plotted against four satellite cloud data sets over the ocean. Triangles are the Nimbus 7 data, squares are the ISC-C2 data, diamonds are the DMSP data, and crosses are the ISC-D2 data. Six low clouds tend to be optically thick and are efficient at reflecting sunlight back into space. An increase in low-altitude clouds will result in planetary cooling. GCRs are a very effective amplifying mechanism for climate forcing because the energy needed to change cloudiness is small compared with the resulting changes in solar radiation received at the Earth's surface. Impact 2009-5 Interestingly, during the 20th century, the Sun's magnetic field which shields Earth from cosmic rays more than doubled, thereby reducing the average influx of cosmic rays. The resulting reduction in cloudiness, especially of low-altitude clouds, may be a significant factor in the global warming Earth has undergone during the last century. In 2006, the Danish National Space Center in Copenhagen conducted experimental studies of aerosol nucleation in air, containing trace amounts of ozone, sulfur dioxide and water vapor at concentrations representative of Earth's atmosphere over the oceans. Their experiments confirmed the causal mechanism by which cosmic rays facilitate the production of clouds in Earth's atmosphere. Seven specifically the experiments showed that, one, stable cloud aerosol clusters were formed in the presence of ions, two, the nucleation rate was proportional to the ion density, three, the characteristic time for producing stable clusters was very short, 2 seconds or less. V global temperature historically observations show the strength of the sun's magnetic field is not constant. 
One gauge of this variation in solar magnetic field intensity is visible in sunspot activity. The Maunder Minimum 1645-1715 AD provides insight into the influence of the sun's magnetic field on natural global climate change on Earth. Refer to Figure 6. During the 30-year period from 1672 to 1699 AD, there were less than 50 sunspots detected, whereas during the past century over the same period between 40,000 to 50,000 sunspots appeared. During the Maunder Minimum, the solar wind was depressed, which allowed greater penetration of GCRs into the inner solar system. This period of minimal solar magnetic field resulted in a prolonged period of greater cloud cover producing a significant decline in Earth's temperature. The Maunder Minimum which is referred to as the Little Ice Age is noted as one of the coldest periods during the past 2000 years. Figure 6 From 1645 to 1715 and a dot d, the Sun's magnetic field went quiet. This was known as the Maunder Minimum. This plot shows the variation in the number of observed sunspots during the time period 1600 to 1800 AD. The red curve is the Wolf sunspot number, and the purple line account of sunspot groups based on a reconstruction by D. V. Hoyt. The green crosses are aurora counts, based on a reconstruction by K. Krivsky and J. P. Legrand. Impact 2009-6 The oceans are the key to unlocking the mysteries of climate change. About 70% of the Earth's surface is covered in water, which absorbs sunlight and warms. The oceans act as a large planetary heat sink because they retain heat better than land masses. Considering the available data, it is clear that the oceans warmed over the 20th century by about the same amount as the atmosphere. This agreement should not be entirely surprising as 70% of the mean global air temperature comes from over oceans. The inconvenient truth that is generally ignored, is that the atmosphere is not capable of warming the oceans to any significant degree 99.9% .9 of ocean heat is derived from sunlight at wavelengths less than 3 microns. The balance is mostly from heat leaking from the interior of the Earth. The greenhouse effect involves a delay in the loss of infrared radiation at wavelengths greater than 5 microns. Eight variations in the amount of sunlight reaching the oceans control the rate at which the oceans warm. This is influenced at long time scales by changes in the Earth's orbit. At short time scales there are changes in the amount of solar irradiance associated with the sunspot cycle. These changes are small. However, the main driver in climate change is the amount of cloud and ice cover. Clouds and sea ice reflect sunlight before it can be absorbed by the oceans, and is referred to as albedo. Albedo changes have a greater influence on climate than the greenhouse effect. Oceans lose heat through evaporation, 53%, infrared radiation, 41%, and conduction, 6%. The greenhouse effect can slow the loss of the infrared radiation, thereby warming the atmosphere but not the oceans. However, evaporation accounts for more than half the heat loss. Evaporation produces clouds, and hence there is a feedback loop warming the oceans results in more evaporation, producing more clouds, which increases albedo, which cools the oceans. This is exactly what was observed during the Tropical Ocean Global Atmosphere Coupled Ocean Atmosphere Response Experiment, Togo Core, that was set up to investigate the Pacific Warm Pool, the warmest ocean water in the western equatorial Pacific Ocean. Core also found that rainfall would cool the ocean surface, so increased evaporation producing rain is another feedback loop. Eight, what does this have to do with the 20th century? Well the observed climate change is consistent with variations in albedo and associated ocean warming and cooling, suggesting that it is just a natural cycle. This pattern of behavior is evident in paleoclimate data for most of the last 10,000 years. None of this is simulated in climate models. Is the link between the intensity of the sun's magnetic field and surface ocean temperature quantifiable? 
Because the area represented by the oceans is large, a long-term change in low-level clouds over the ocean should have a significant effect on planetary temperature. Most of the natural background radiation over the oceans is derived from cosmic radiation rather than natural sources. As a result, the effect of GCR cloud modulation is greatest over the oceans where there is less dust to form clouds and there is a shortage of cloud-forming ions. Rain removes the ions, so they must be constantly replenished. One method of measuring the sun's magnetic strength is by measuring the production of sunspots. But Georgia recommends a better method by measuring the ability of the magnetic field wrapped in the solar winds to interact and distort the Earth's magnetic field. The high-speed solar wind stream is produced by coronal mass ejections, coronal holes and magnetic clouds. The geomagnetic activity reflects the impact of solar activity originating from both closed and open magnetic field regions on the Sun, so it is a better indicator of solar magnetic activity than sunspot number which is related to only closed magnetic field regions. Nine, this geomagnetic distortion has been measured at two locations on the opposite side of the globe, one in Great Britain and the other in Australia, since 1868 AD. This combined distortion is referred to as the AA index. Figure 7 graphs global monthly ocean temperature anomalies in relationship to the AA index for the past 120 years. The relationship is described by the formula, ocean surface temperature anomaly equals 0.203 ln, AA index, 0.778 degrees Celsius, 1, impact 2009-7. Impact 2009-8 This figure was derived using the Smith-Reynolds Extended Reconstructed Sea Surface Temperature, V3, 10. The time series in ASCII format was accessed through ftp colon double forward slash eclipse dot ncdc dot noa dot gov forward slash pub forward slash erst forward slash do forward slash by selecting data set arif dot mon dot ocean dot ninety s dot ninety n dot asc. The monthly data set arif dot mon dot ocean dot ninety s. 90n.asc was used which covers sea surface temperature, SST, for the period from January, 1880 to October, 2007 for the entire ocean from 90 degrees north latitude to 90 degrees south latitude. The temperature anomalies are computed from the analyzed monthly field minus the climatology for that month using the years 1971 to 2000 as a baseline. The second parameter used was the monthly AA index which covers the period from January 1868 to September 2007.11, the time series is accessed by selecting the data set AA underscore month dot. Since major volcanic eruptions are known to affect Earth's climate, the database provided by the Smithsonian National Museum of Natural History on large Holocene eruptions was used to filter out this climatic effect. 12 all eruptions with a volcanic explosivity index, VEI, of 6 or greater were identified and the temperature data from the time of eruption until 2 years later were deleted from the data set. These eruptions include Krakatau, the 27th of August, 1883, Santa Maria, the 24th of October, 1902, Novarupta, the 6th of June, 1912, and Pinatubo, the 15th of June, 1991. One might question if the natural log drop-off as the AA index approaches zero is a real phenomena. Figure 8 shows an ocean surface temperature reconstruction in the Sargasso Sea, a 2 million square mile region of the Atlantic Ocean as determined by isotope ratios of marine organism remains in sediment at the bottom of the sea. During the depths of the Little Ice Age, ocean temperatures were approximately 1 degree Celsius colder than present. Although the Maunder Minimum preceded the start of AA index measurements, it is my opinion that the Maunder Minimum represents a time frame when this parameter approached zero. When an AA index of near zero, 0.1, is entered into equation, 1, it produces a temperature drop of approximately 1 degree Celsius as compared to present day temperatures. 
Thus there appears to be agreement between the formula and observed sea temperatures on the extremes of the quiet sun. Figure 8. Surface temperatures in the Sargasso Sea, a 2 million square mile region of the Atlantic Ocean, with time resolution of 50 to 100 years. The horizontal line is the average temperature for this 3,000 year period. The Little Ice Age and medieval climate optimum were naturally occurring, extended intervals of climate departures from the mean.13 This leads to the observation that the Earth's climate system is fairly robust. Medium to high levels of solar magnetic fields produce fairly stable warm temperatures. Only when the sun is magnetically quiet does temperature take a dramatic plunge. Impact 2009-9six global cooling threat in the anthropogenic global warming agw theory according to the intergovernmental panel on climate change ipcc the sun and earth's cloud cover play only minor roles in climate change in the agw theory rising atmospheric carbon dioxide levels cause rising temperatures on earth but actual temperatures have been falling from the peak year 1998 the lower troposphere temperatures globally has fallen around a half degrees Celsius. 1998 versus 2008, this is despite the fact that during that same time period, atmospheric carbon dioxide has risen 5% from 367 ppm to 386 ppm. The AGW theory failed to predict this trend. Some might argue that weather is being confused with climate. The range of this data is over 10 years. I assert that a decade of global temperatures represents a climate change and a half degrees Celsius is too significant to be ignored. The AGW theory is hinged on untested, unvalidated, computer models. These falling temperatures occurred at the same time as the sun went quiet as it is transitioning into solar cycle 24. This observation conforms to the Natural Global Cooling NGC, theory. The NGC theory has a long history of defining past climate changes, a history of observed cooling events such as the Dalton Minimum, Maunder Minimum, Spora Minimum and Wolf Minimum. Any warming theized by AGW appears to be insignificant in comparison to the large rapid fall observed in lower tropospheric temperature being driven naturally by the weakening solar magnetic field during this solar minimum. Climate change is primarily driven by nature. It has been true in the days of my father and his father and all those that came before us. Because of science, not junk science, we have slowly uncovered some of the fundamental mysteries of nature. Our Milky Way galaxy is awash with cosmic rays. These are high-speed charged particles that originate from exploding stars. Because they are charged, their travel is strongly induced by magnetic elds. Our Sun produces a magnetic eld that extends to the edges of our solar system. This magnetic field is wrapped in the solar winds. This eld dicts many of the cosmic rays away from Earth. But when the sun goes quiet, minimal sunspots, this eld collapses inward allowing cosmic rays to penetrate deeper into our solar system. As a result, far greater numbers collide with Earth and penetrate down into the lower atmosphere where they ionize small particles of moisture, humidity, forming them into water droplets that become clouds. Low-level clouds wreak sunlight back into space. An increase in Earth's cloud cover produce a global drop in temperature. These periods of quiet sun are referred to as a grand minima. The Maunder minimum 1645-1715 and the Dalton minimum 1790-1830 are examples. During a grand minima the Earth begins to slowly cool. The start of the planting season is delayed and in the fall early frost limits the harvest. Earth's abundant bounty is put on hold and starvation takes its ghastly grip. Historian, John D. Post, referred to the last period of quiet sun, the Dalton Minimum, as the last great subsistence crisis in the Western world. With the cold came massive crop failures, food riots, famine and disease. 
Several scientists including David Hathaway, NASA, 14, William Livingston and Matthew Penn, National Solar Observatory, 15, Karbibolo Abduzamatoth, Russian Academy of Science, 16, Cornelius de Jagger, the Netherlands, and Esther Howe, Argentina, 17 and Theodor Landschied, Germany, 18, have forecasted that the Sun may enter a period similar to the Dalton minimum or a more severe grand minima a decade from now in solar cycle 25. A few scientists including David C. Archibald, Australia, 19 and Emma Clilverd, Britain, 20 have warned this might even begin in solar cycle 24. We are at the transition into solar cycle 24 and this cycle has already shown itself to be unusually quiet. The number of spotless days, days without sunspots, during this solar minimum appears to be tracking three times the typical number observed during the last century, solar cycles 1623, impact 2009-10. There are several lessons learned from studying very early global cooling events in Europe. Lessons learned include, asterisk onset of these conditions can be very abrupt and very severe. Asterisk a decline in food production due to, dramatic increase in days with overcast skies. Decline in the intensity of sunlight. Decline by several degrees in global temperature, regions of massive rainfall and flooding, limited regions experienced droughts, shortened growing season asterisk a string of major and minor famines asterisk malnutrition lead to weakened immune system. Produced influenza epidemics. Asterisk reoccurrence of plagues such as the Black Plague. Asterisk lack of feed for livestock asterisk parasites, i.e. Fusarium nival, which thrived under snow cover, devastated crops. Asterisk grain storage in cool damp conditions produced fungus, ergot blight. Contaminated grains when consumed caused an illness, street anthony's fire, producing convulsions, hallucinations, gangrenous rotting of extremities. Asterisk flooding created swamplands that became mosquito breeding grounds and introduced tropical diseases such as malaria throughout Europe. Asterisk during hot summers, cold air aloft produced killer hailstorms, hailstones that could kill a cow. Asterisk higher frequency of powerful storms produced major devastations. Asterisk glacier advance swallowed up entire alpine villages. Asterisk ruptured glacial ice dams produced deadly floods. Temperatures are already falling. The main threat from a Dalton minimum or Maunda minimum event is famine and starvation, affecting millions or hundreds of millions worldwide, due to shortened growing seasons and harsher weather. In the past, in addition to great famines, this cold harsh weather has also led to major epidemics. Historical pattern of cold weather associated with a quiet sun Historical evidence exists of the Mississippi River, Ohio River, Allegheny River, Delaware River and Hudson River at the New York Harbor freezing and very harsh winters. A few decades after the Dalton minimum in the spring Eliza, a slave, carrying her young son, fled from Kentucky by crossing the Ohio River on foot. The river was swollen and turbulent, great cakes of floating ice were swinging heavily to and fro in the turbid waters. She leaped from one chunk of ice to the next until she reached freedom on the Ohio shore. 21, Harriet Beecher Stowe lived in Cincinnati, Ohio from 1832 to 1850. In 1851, she wrote Uncle Tom's Cabin. Her life in Ohio was intertwined in this work of fiction. During the Dalton Minimum the Hudson River at the New York Harbor froze, enabling people to walk across the ice from Manhattan to Staten Island. The Hudson froze over completely during particularly brutal winter of 1779-1780, when the surface was solid for five weeks straight and the British rolled cannons over the ice. In 1821, taverns were constructed in the middle of the river to offer warmth and refreshment to pedestrians. 22,23 During the Dalton Minimum from 1803 to 1806, Captains Lewis and Clark lead a transcontinental expedition to explore the Greater Northwest. 
During the winter of 1804-1805, the explorers set up a winter base camp near the Big Knife River near what is today the town of Bismarck, North Dakota. The winter was bitterly cold. There were six days with temperatures of minus 31 degrees Fahrenheit or lower. These occurred in 1804 on the 12th of December, minus 38 degrees Fahrenheit, the 17th of December, minus 45 degrees Fahrenheit, the 18th of December, minus 32 degrees Fahrenheit, in 1805 on the 10th of January, minus 40 degrees Fahrenheit, the 11th of January, minus 38 degrees Fahrenheit, and the 13th of January, minus 34 degrees Fahrenheit. Compare this to the current low temperatures of Bismarck, North Dakota in which only one impact 2009-11. Day in the past decade fell below minus 30 degrees Fahrenheit. On the 15th of January, 2009 the temperature fell to dash 44 degree F.24,25 during the Dalton minimum early settlers routinely waited till winter to cross the frozen Mississippi River in their wagon trains. In 1799, George Frederick Bollinger led a group of early pioneers from North Carolina to establish early settlements in Missouri. They hoped to cross their largest obstacle, the Mississippi River, on the ice, frozen solid in midwinter. They arrived on the east bank of the Mississippi River opposite St. Genevieve in late December, pitched camp and explored potential river crossings. St. Genevieve is located about a hundred miles downstream from St. Louis. Daily the thickness of the ice was measured and then on the 31st of December, a chopped hole in the ice indicated thickness well over two feet. The next day the settlers successfully drove their heavy loaded wagons across the river.26 between the Dalton minimum and the Maunder minimum December, 1776 was a desperate time for George Washington and the American Revolution. During the night of the 25th of December, Washington led his small continental army of 2,400 troops from Pennsylvania across the Delaware River made dangerous and barely navigable by huge chunks of ice. Once across they launched a surprise attack on the Britain's Hessian mercenaries at Trenton, New Jersey, capturing 1,000 prisoners and seizing muskets, powder, and artillery.27,28 between the Dalton Minimum and the Maunder Minimum in Boston, Massachusetts on the 22nd of February, 1772, Anna, a young schoolgirl, writes in her diary since about the middle of December, we have had till this week, a series of cold and stormy weather, every snowstorm, of which we have had abundance, except the first. Ended with rain, by which means the snow was so hardened that the strong gales at northwest soon turned it, and all above ground to ice. In some streets about town this mixture of ice and snow is five feet thick. On the 11th of March, she writes that the snow is now seven feet deep in some places around her house.29 between the Dalton Minimum and the Maunder Minimum just before the opening battles of the French and Indian War in December, 1753, George Washington, then 21 years old, crossed the Allegheny River. In their first attempt, Washington and a guide used a raft to cross the ice-choked river and this ended in disaster as Washington was knocked overboard in deep water and saved himself only by catching the raft as it swept by. The severe cold that night froze their clothes and the guide's fingers. The river also froze, however, allowing them to walk across on the ice the next morning. Soon they reached the safety of an English trader settlement.30 during the Maunder Minimum during the Great Frost of 1683-1684, in England, the River Thames was completely frozen for two months, the ice was 11 inches thick at London. Sea ice was reported along the coasts of southeast England, and ice prevented the use of many harbours. The sea froze, so that ice formed for a time between Dover and Calais, joining England and France. It is more likely that the shorelines froze and a great mass of densely packed icebergs, some 11 feet thick, built up along the coastlines fusing into a semi-rigid structure that may have connected the two shorelines together. 
The Thames was recorded to have frozen over at London during the years 1649, 1655, 1663, 1666, 1667, 1684, 1695, 1709, and 1716. 31, 32, 33, 34 during the Little Ice Age. Growing seasons in England and continental Europe generally became short and unreliable, which led to shortages and famine. These hardships were nothing compared to the more northerly countries, glaciers advanced rapidly in Greenland, Iceland, Scandinavia and North America, making vast tracts of land uninhabitable. The Arctic pack ice extended so far south that several reports describe Eskimos landing their kayaks in Scotland. Finland's population fell by one-third, Iceland's by half, the Viking colonies in Greenland were abandoned altogether, as were many Inuit communities. 35 Impact 2009 12. During the Spora Minimum by 1518, early explorers made significant progress in probing and surveying the New World. They described North America as a land of frozen seas, horrid, barren, and scarcely habitable for cold. In the New World, cold predominates. The rigour of the frigid zone extends over half of those regions which should be temperate by their position. Countries where the grape and the fig should ripen, are buried under snow one half of the year, and lands situated in the same parallel with the most fertile and best cultivated provinces in Europe, are chilled with perpetual frosts, which almost destroy the power of vegetation. 36-7 Plague causal relationship Great famines and plagues appeared together historically, not only because malnourished populations are more susceptible to disease but because they share a common causal link. I assert that the plagues did not just coincide with past global cooling events but were directly spawned by the increasing levels of GCR radiation. Two examples, which appeared at the onset of both the Dark Ages and the beginning of the Little Ice Age, are the Yersinia pestis bacillus, and the Rinderpest virus. Radiation is a powerful mutagen. The long-term effects of radiation are genetic alteration, cancer induction, damage to the central nervous system and peripheral neurons and accelerated aging. Densely ionizing radiation like alpha particles or heavier ions generate a greater biological effect than the same dose of X-rays. X-rays can produce isolated single and double DNA strand breaks, which can be repaired by the cells rather quickly and cleanly. Proton and ion radiation produces complex cluster damage to the DNA strands that are significantly less repairable. A macroscopic tumor may originate from only one transformed cell. If a single mutated cell survives, cancer may develop. The primary means that multicellular organisms utilize to repair radiation damage is to identify and discard the affected cell and manufacture replacements. But single cell organisms do not have that luxury. As a result, many single cell organisms have evolved very complex and redundant repair mechanisms that ensure their survivability even under higher levels of radiation damage. The most resistant organisms are single-stranded viruses, followed by double-stranded viruses, bacteria, algae and yeast. Under nuclear radiation, many of these single-cell organisms will mutate and survive. The genetic variations will spawn new mutated single-cell organisms that are extremely virulent and deadly especially to the future host they infect. That is why great plagues are intertwined with the great famines at the onset of major global cooling events. Sensitivity of prokaryotic and eukaryotic organisms to radiation name species D0, Grays, T1 Fange virus 2600 S Cherokee. Coli B forward slash are bacteria 30 Bacillus subtilis cells Bacillus 33 Saccharomyces cerevisiae yeast 150 Chlamydomonas algae 24 Human Human 1.4 D0 is defined as the dose necessary to reduce survival to 1 forward slash E, 37%. 
Gray is a unit of measure defined as 1 joule per kilogram of absorbed radiation. 37 This table shows that typically viruses, bacteria, and bacilli can survive the damage from greater ionizing radiation exposure than many multicellular organisms. But very high energy GCRs will damage these organisms, producing new mutated and lethal strains. Water is a natural shield to nuclear radiation. These genetic mutations are most likely to occur where the Earth's natural atmospheric shielding is thinnest, and the air is the driest, such as the high deserts. Impact 2009-13「Rinderpest – An extremely virulent variant of Rinderpest struck animals immediately at the onset of the First Little Ice Age in 1315 AD producing an animal plague that wiped out vast herd of oxen, sheep, goats, camels, buffaloes, yaks, etc. In several large herds, only a couple animals survived. This plague was also present during the Dark Ages that began in 536 AD Black Death, Bubonic plague, Yersinia pestis is a pathogen that has undergone large-scale genetic flux. Global cooling at the beginning of the Dark Ages began in 536 AD. An outbreak of the bubonic plague struck Constantinople six years later. It was caused by a very deadly variant of the Yersinia pestis bacillus that used fleas, and rats, as a plague transport mechanism. This plague was referred to as the Plague of Justine. As it swept from the Middle East to the Mediterranean Basin, approximately 50% of population perished. Global cooling at the beginning of the Little Ice Age began in 1315 AD. An outbreak of the bubonic plague struck the Chinese Gobi Desert 15 years later. This deadly variant of the Yersinia pestis bacillus killed 35 million Asians and spread westward where it killed approximately one-third of the European population. The plague was known as the Black Death. It came in three variants, bubonic plague, primary septicemic plague, and the pneumonic plague. To date, this deadly bacillus has been responsible for 200 million human deaths. The flea forward slash rat forward slash human plague route still exists today. The earth is a fertile ground for another great plague. If a mutated form of the bubonic plague were to infect the rat population, the results could be devastating. For example, it is estimated that the number of rats living in New York City is in the range of 44 to 96 million. The estimated rat population in the United States may exceed 300 million. Malaria another type of plague occurred during past global cooling events. But this time, instead of resulting from genetic mutation, it was due to the GCR-induced extensive flooding. The heavy rainfalls produced new swamplands across the globe. These swamps became breeding grounds for major mosquito-borne diseases including malaria. Major malaria outbreaks occurred across Europe during the beginning of the Little Ice Age around 1315 AD Malaria is transmitted by mosquitoes. When a mosquito bites an infected person, it ingests microscopic malaria parasites found in the person's blood. When the mosquito then bites another person, the parasites go from the mosquito's mouth into the person's blood. Within a human, the parasite goes to the liver, replicates, and moves into the bloodstream, where it attacks red blood cells for their hemoglobin. Toxins from the parasite are then released into the blood, making the person feel sick. Malaria produces fever and flu-like illness, including shaking chills, headache, muscle aches, and tiredness. Nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea can also occur. Malaria in children can produce anemia, jaundice, kidney failure, seizures, mental confusion, coma, and death. The World Health Organization estimates that 300 to 500 million cases of malaria occur and more than 1 million people die each year from malaria, mostly children in sub-Sahara Africa. Impact 2009-14 8. Earth's magnetic field weakening of the Earth's magnetic field, 
Fracturing the strong dipole into several minipole reversals is a strong amplifying mechanism for GCR-induced global cooling. We live in a great ice age called the Pleistocene Epoch which began around 1.8 million years ago and will continue for several million years into the future. During an ice age, the Earth cycles between cold glacial and warm interglacial periods. An interglacial is a short warming period where the Earth thaws between the icy grips of the glacial periods. The present interglacial period, the Holocene, began approximately 12,000 years ago. Ice Age transitions for past 1.5 million years Holocene, interglacial, 12,000 years ago, present, Wisconsin forward slash Weichsel, glacial period, 110,000-12,000 years ago, Sangamonian forward slash Emian, interglacial, 130,000-110,000 years ago, Illinoisan forward slash Zala, glacial, 200,000-130,000 years ago, Yarmouth forward slash Holstein, interglacial, 300,000 forward slash 380,000-200,000 years ago, Kanzan forward slash Elsterian, glacial, 455,000, 300,000 forward slash 380,000 years ago, Aftonian, interglacial, 620,000 to 455,000 years ago, Nebraskan forward slash. Menopian, glacial, 680,000, 620,000 years ago, Parstonian stage, interglacial, 800,000, 680,000 years ago, pre-Parstonian stage, glacial, 1,300,000-800,000 years ago, Bramatonian stage, interglacial, 1,550,000-1,300,000 years ago, one of the predominant theories describing the cause of glacial forward slash interglacial periods is the Milankovitch cycle theory. According to the theory, small variations in Earth-Sun geometry change determine the amount of sunlight each hemisphere receives during the Earth's yearly orbital cycle around the Sun. These geometry changes include, 1, eccentricity, small variations in the changing of Earth's orbit around the Sun, circular forward slash oval, on a 100,000-year cycle, 2, obliquity, the tilt of Earth's spin axis between 22 and 24 degrees every 41,000 years, and, 3, precession, Earth wobbles toward and away from the Sun over the span of 19,000 to 23,000 years. But the theory fails in describing, 1, the abrupt nature of transition boundaries between glacial and interglacial periods, sometimes occurring within a few short years, 2, because orbitally induced changes in the solar energy flux received by the Earth is too weak, and, 3, because the actual glacial forward slash interglacial period lengths vary significantly from theoretical projections. When the Earth's magnetic field is strong, it is characterized as a dipole with a north and south magnetic pole on opposite sides of the Earth. But when the magnetic field weakens, it often breaks down into quadrupoles, octopoles and local magnetic field reversals, minipole reversals. The appearance of this complex structure allows minipoles to effectively cancel out the Earth's total magnetic field reducing the overall magnetic field strength to 10% or below. During this phase the local fields can reverse polarity several times before they restructure back into a strong dipole configuration. The restructuring can lead to a global polarity reversal or to a restoration of the normal state. The intensity of the Earth's magnetic field has been declining. Scientific analysis of ancient pottery has shown that the magnetic field strength has declined 50% in the last 4,000 years. Recently, the decline has become very steep and pronounced. The decline in field strength at the equator has fallen 4.5% during the last century. Most of this decline occurred during the last 25 years. Using the International Geomagnetic Reference Field, IGRF, dataset, 
the magnetic field at the equator in open ocean shows a decline of 1.7% in intensity since 1980. Geomag program, IGRF dataset, latitude 0 degrees, longitude 180 degrees, years 1980 to 2005, a decline from 34,824 to 34,246 nanotesla, NT. Impact 2009-15. Dr. Hake Inovan Linner, research professor at Geophysics Research, Finnish Meteorological Institute, wrote an article in Helsingin Sanomat, the leading newspaper in Finland, the 27th of July, 2002. In the article, he states that the North Hemisphere magnetic pole has moved 1,500 kilometers in the past 100 years while the South Hemisphere magnetic pole has moved only 1,000 kilometers during the same period. The structure of the Earth's magnetic field is currently asymmetric. A South Atlantic anomaly, SAA, has appeared, which is a major depression in the magnetic field strength. The field strength within this depression approaches only 20,000 nanotesla, nt.38 The SAA can be described as a large local magnetic field reversal. The fact that Earth's magnetic field is currently asymmetric combined with the fact that a magnetic field depression has formed would lead one to believe that the Earth's magnetic pole components are being restructured. When Earth's magnetic field changes are viewed through the prism of GCR forward slash cloud linkage, an interesting observation can be made. Cloud formation due to cosmic rays is temperature dependent and therefore latitude dependent. The Earth is protected by a magnetic field that provides the greatest protection at the equator and the weakest at the poles. But the poles are generally the coldest areas on the Earth, characterized by very low humidity. Without any moisture and heat to work with, cosmic rays are very ineffectual in forming clouds. But on the other hand the equatorial ocean areas with heat and humidity are great breeding grounds for massive storms, but these are the areas shielded the most by Earth's magnetic field. GCR penetration in the equatorial region is a robust mechanism for great cloud formation. Therefore as the Earth's magnetic field begins to weaken and localized areas of magnetic pole reversals form closer to equatorial regions, the effects of GCR cooling greatly increases. The Earth's magnetic field was extremely robust during the Holocene. The abrupt strengthening in the magnetic field coincided with the abrupt end of the last glacial period. By contrast, the last two interglacial periods came to an end when the Earth's magnetic field was weak and near the point of a magnetic field reversal. I assert that the weakening of the Earth's magnetic field will signal the end of the present Holocene interglacial. As the Earth's magnetic field weakens further, other regions of magnetic field reversals will materialize. When these regions materialize near equatorial regions where elevated moisture and heat prevail, significant global cooling will begin driving the Earth back into the next glacial period. Solar grand minima occur very abruptly. I assert that these minima will occur during both glacial and interglacial periods. The combination of a minipole reversal near the equatorial region with a grand minima event can explain the abruptness seen in interglacial forward slash glacial transitions. References 1 W.J.R. Alexander, F. Bailey, D.B. Bredenkamp, A. Van der Merwe and N. Willems 2007, Linkages Between Solar Activity, Climate Predictability and Water Resource Development, Journal of the South African Institute of Civil Engineering, 49, 2, June, 2007, pp. 32-44 URL, http colon double forward slash nsclimatescience.net forward slash images forward slash pdfs forward slash alexander 2707.pdf, cited the 14th of April, 2009, 2. I.G. Usiskin, S.K. Solanke, and G.A. Kovaltsov 2007, Grand Minima and Maxima of Solar Activity, New Observational Constraints, Astronomy and Astrophysics, 
471 pp. 301309 309 doi 10.1051 forward slash 0004 6361 colon 20077704 URL http colon double forward slash cc dot hulu dot fi forward slash tilde user skin forward slash personal forward slash aa 7704 07 dot pdf Cited the 14th of April, 2009, 3. S.A. Sterodubsev, I.G. Yususkin, A.V. Grigoryev and K. Mishila, 2005, Long-Term Modulation of the Cosmic Ray Fluctuation Spectrum, Spacecraft Measurements, 29th International Cosmic Ray Conference Pune, 2, pp. 247250 URL HTTP colon double forward slash cc dot hulu dot fi forward slash tilde user skin forward slash personal forward slash icrc 2005 underscore yaku dot pdf cited the 27th of May 2009 4 Marsh N and H Svensmark 2000 Cosmic Rays, Clouds and Climate, Space Science Review 94, pp. 215-230, URL, http colon double forward slash www.3.dk forward slash tilde hsv forward slash ssr underscore paper dot pdf, cited the 14th of April, 2009, 5. H. Svensmark 1998, Influence of Cosmic Rays on Earth's Climate, Physical Review Letters, 81, the 15th of October, 1998, pp. 5027 5030, URL, http colon double forward slash www.3.dk forward slash tilde hsv forward slash plurisup 2.pdf Cited the 14th of April, 2009, 6. H. Svensmark and E. Fries Christensen 1997, Variation of Cosmic Ray Flux and Global Cloud Coverage, A Missing Link in Solar Climate Relationships, Journal of Atmospheric and Solar Terrestrial Physics, 59, 11, pp. 1225-1232, URL, http colon double forward slash www.3.dk forward slash tilde hsv forward slash 9700001.pdf, cited the 14th of April, 2009, Impact 2009-16. Seven H. Svensmark, J. O. P. Pedersen, N. D. Marsh, M. B. Inghof, and U. I. Agar Hoge, 2007. Experimental evidence for the role of ions in particle nucleation under atmospheric conditions. Proceedings of the Royal Society of Mathematical, Physical and Engineering Sciences, 4632078, pp. 385-396. Doi 10.1098 forward slash aspar.2006.1773. Eight Willem de Lang, Why I Am a Climate Realist, New Zealand Centre for Political Research, the 23rd of May, 2009, URL, http colon double forward slash www.nzcpr.com forward slash guest 147.htm, cited the 27th of May, 2009, 9. K. Georgieva, C. B. and C. and B. Clear of 2005, once again about global warming and solar activity, mem. S.A.R.T. 76, 969, URL, HTTP colon double forward slash site dot oat dot ts dot astro dot it forward slash msa at 760405 forward slash pdf forward slash 2005 millimeter sai dot dot 76 dot dot 969 g dot pdf, cited the 3rd of January, 2008 10.
National Climate Data Center, NOAA, Extended Reconstructed Sea Surface Temperature, v 3 URL, http colon double forward slash www.ncdc.noa.gov forward slash OA forward slash climate forward slash research forward slash SST forward slash ERSTV3.php hash sign disk, cited the 8th of January, 2008, 11. National Climate Data Center, NOAA, Solar Data, URL, FTP colon double forward slash FTP dot NGDC dot NOAA dot gov forward slash STP forward slash solar underscore data forward slash related underscore indices forward slash AA underscore index forward slash, cited the 17th of December, 2007. 12 Smithsonian National Museum of Natural History, Large Holocene Eruptions, URL, http colon double forward slash www.volcano.si.edu forward slash world forward slash large eruptions dot cfm, cited the 17th of December, 2007, 13. A. B. Robinson, N. E. Robinson, and W. Soon, 2007, Environmental Effects of Increased Atmospheric Carbon Dioxide, Journal of American Physicians and Surgeons 12, pp. 79-90, URL, http colon double forward slash www.hoism.org forward slash project forward slash s33p36.htm, cited 10 January, 2008, 14. Solar cycle 25 peaking around 2022 could be one of the weakest in centuries, fazorg.com, URL, http colon double forward slash www.fazorg.com forward slash pdf 66581392.pdf, cited the 25th of May, 2009, 15. W. Livingston and M. Penn, Sunspots May Vanish by 2015, URL, http colon double forward slash whatzoopwithit.files.wordpress.com forward slash 2008 forward slash 06 forward slash Livingston Penn underscore sunspots 2.pdf, cited the 25th of May, 2009, 16. K. H. I. Abduzame Toth. 2007, optimal prediction of the peak of the next 11-year activity cycle and of the peaks of several succeeding cycles on the basis of long-term variations in the solar radius or solar constant, kinematics and physics of celestial bodies, 23, 3, June, 2007, pp. 97 to 100, URL, http colon double forward slash www.springlink.com forward slash content forward slash 6T76758J320636U7 7 7 forward slash, cited the 25th of May, 2009, 17. Cedar Jagger and Esther Howe, 2009, Forecasting the Parameters of Sunspot Cycle 24 and Beyond, Journal of Atmospheric and Solar Terrestrial Physics, 71, 2, February, 2009, pp. 239-245, URL, http colon double forward slash www.sciencedirect.com forward slash science question mark underscore of equals article url and underscore lodi equals b6 vhb4 v4 kr235 and underscore user equals 777686 and underscore cover date equals 02% 2f 28% 2f 2009 and underscore alid equals 908671499 and underscore a doc equals 6 and underscore fmt equals high and underscore a rig equals search and underscore die equals 6062 and underscore sort equals d and underscore dokenshire equals and view equals c and underscore ct equals 152 and underscore account equals c 00004303 and underscore version equals 1 and underscore url version equals 0 and underscore user it equals 777686 and md5 equals b98b6ba8027 
7421855073D993D1E7731, cited the 25th of May 2009, 18. T. New Little Ice Age, instead of global warming, URL, http colon double forward slash www.skillphysique.de forward slash climber forward slash landsheed forward slash isage dot htm, cited the 25th of May, 2009, 19. D. Archibald, 2006, Solar Cycles 24 and 25 and Predicted Climate Response, Energy and Environment, 17, 1, 2006, URL, http colon double forward slash www.devadarchibald.info forward slash papers forward slash solar percent sign 20 cycles percent sign 2024 percent sign 20 and percent sign 2025 percent sign 20 and percent sign 20 predicted percent sign 20 climate percent 20 response.pdf, cited the 25th of May, 2009, 20. M. A. Clilverd, E. Clark, T. Ulick, H. Rich Beth, M. J. Jarvis, 2006, Predicting Solar Cycle 24 and Beyond, Space Weather, 4, S09005, doi 101029 forward slash 2005 SW000207, URL, HTTP colon double forward slash users dot telenet dot b forward slash j dot Johnson's forward slash sc24 clilver dot pdf, cited the 25th of May, 2009, 21. Harriet Beecher Stowe, Uncle Tom's Cabin or, Life Among the Lolly, The Eastern Press, Norwalk, Connecticut, 1979 edition pp 32-41. 22 When New York Harbor Froze Over, 1779-1780, The Old Salt Blog HTTP colon double forward slash www.oldsaltblog.com forward slash tag forward slash Hudson dash frozen forward slash, cited the 14th of April, 2009, 23. D.B. Schneider, FYI, The New York Times, the 20th of February, 2000 HTTP colon double forward slash www.nytimes.com forward slash 2000 forward slash 02 forward slash 20 forward slash Nigen forward slash phi dash 859087.html question mark. Sec equals and spawn equals, cited the 14th of April, 2009, 24. The Journals of the Expedition under the Command of Captains Lewis and Clark, Volume 1, The Eastern Press, Norwalk, Connecticut, 1993 edition, pp 8598-25. Weather Underground, History of Bismarck, North Dakota, http colon double forward slash www.vunderground.com forward slash history forward slash airport forward slash bis forward slash 2009 forward slash 1 forward slash 1 forward slash monthly history dot html, rec underscore city equals na and rec underscore state equals na and rec underscore state name equals na, cited the 14th of April, 2009, 26. The Bollinger Migration to the Louisiana Territory, part of Bollinger Collection compiled by Orina Bollinger in 1984 http colon double forward slash free dot ancestry dot com forward slash tilde ed fry forward slash bolu dot html, cited the 14th of April, 2009, 27. George Washington Crossing the Delaware River by Luce, Africans in America Resource Bank, http colon double forward slash www.pbs.org forward slash wgbh forward slash aia forward slash part 2 forward slash 2h48.html, cited the 14th of April, 2009, 28. 
Washington's crossing of the Delaware River, Wikipedia, http colon double forward slash en dot wikipedia dot org forward slash wiki forward slash Washington's underscore crossing underscore of underscore the underscore Delaware underscore river, cited the 14th of April, 2009, 29. Anna Green Winslow 1771, 1773, Diary of a Boston School Girl, edited by Alice Morse Earle, The Riverside Press, Cambridge, 1894, pp 32-33, 42-43. 30 Mission to the Ohio, George Washington's Mount Vernon Estate and Gardens HTTP colon double forward slash www.mountvernon.org forward slash visit forward slash plan forward slash index dot cfm forward slash pid forward slash 129 forward slash cited the 14th of April 2009, 31. River Thames Frost Fairs, Wikipedia, http colon double forward slash en dot wikipedia dot org forward slash wiki forward slash river underscore Thames underscore frost underscore fairs, cited the 14th of April, 2009, 32. Historical weather events 1650 to 1699, http colon double forward slash www.booty.org.uk forward slash booty.weather forward slash climate forward slash 1650 underscore 1699.htm, cited the 14th of April, 2009, 33. The Great Frost of 1683-4, http colon double forward slash www.pastpresented.info forward slash frost 1683.htm, cited the 14th of April, 2009, 34. Where Thames Smooth Waters Glide, http colon double forward slash thames.me.uk forward slash s00051.htm, cited the 14th of April, 2009, 35. L. Solomon, The Deniers, Our Spotless Son, Financial Post, the 31st of May, 2008, http colon double forward slash network dot national post dot com forward slash np forward slash blogs forward slash comment forward slash archive forward slash 2008 forward slash 05 forward slash 31 forward slash the denies our spotless son dot aspx, cited the 14th of April, 2009, 36. William Robertson, the History of the Discovery and Settlement of America, 1826, Jones and Company, London, pp 80-81. 37 C. Bornstuck Kuhn and Aphasius 2002, Life Under Conditions of Ionizing Radiation. Astrobiology. The Quest for the Conditions of Life. Horneck, G. Bornstuck Kahn, C. Eds. Springerberg, Berlin Heidelberg, New York, pp. 261-28438. Danish Space Research Institute, Planetary Magnetic Fields, URL, http colon double forward slash www.3.dk forward slash showpage.php3 question mark ID equals sign 65. Cited the 14th of April, 2009, Impact 2009-17.